here it is, people. My annual best of bait finesse lures that I use personally all year long. Just the top 10. The ones that make it in my go-to box that work any and everywhere. Any and everywhere. You see something on here that you hadn't seen before? Leave a comment and I'll let you know what it is. But if you know every single one of these lords, you're a good one. Because I don't even know every single one of these lords. Now nah, I'm messing with you. But let's get ready to break this bad boy down. The top 10 with two honorable mentions. All right, people. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Start off by saying, as you've seen the first little clip, this is the best of 2023. The lords that I chose all of 2023. We're gonna start with the honorable mentions and get those out of the way. I actually have two this time, two honorable mentions. First honorable mention is the Smith B Insights. 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 64. Insights? <sighs> Insights 64. I am gonna say on the screen, by the way, I'm gonna do something a little different. I'm gonna have the fish that it catches, pros and cons, lower weight and all of that information. I'm not going to talk too much about the lore itself. I'm just gonna give you the lore and all that information is gonna come up on the screen so that this can be a little bit faster than my other two videos that I put out before. Those also will be in the description or in the comments so that you can click back if you haven't seen those. I try to keep it where the lures that I use are in high, 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 high pressure places, meaning a lot of people fish them and I still catch fish. I try not to take it to a private place because a private place, I could throw anything. And I have a few private places that I go to that I can literally throw anything. I don't even make videos for those too often, maybe like once or twice. And that's when I'm in Virginia. So you guys don't have to worry about that. But number one for the honorable mention was Smith's D Insights and C's. I don't even. The other honorable mention is the trout series. I'm actually starting to paint some. I've been posted all over the place. I got an event coming up, so they come originally, which I don't have any that's put together because I've taken all of these apart. They're called the Blux Jack Claw 70. It's the Join the Claw knockoff. It's literally five bucks in comparison to 30 or 20. Between, depending on where you go so you can find it for 20 to 30, but these are under $5 most of the time it is the Blux 70 and this is a floating model it swims phenomenally it catches fish some come a little messed up what i mean by messed up they don't swim right you just gotta tune them and adjust this little piece in the front to make it glide the bonus to these is the price and the fact that they have they have more action for a person who hasn't used the game craft or use the game craft and don't like the action because the retrieve is a lot slower with the game craft versus the blocks the blocks you can kind of reel it a lot faster in comparison to its counterpart or its higher price version those are the two honorable mentions number 10 number 10 also, by the way, I'm in a different room. I'm actually in my shop versus where I usually am. This is where I'm gonna be doing like any of my, uh, I guess you would say like videos that relate to fishing lures where I'm sitting down versus being outside. I'm actually in, in my building or my shop or room per se. And let's just get to number 10. Number 10 is Creek Life. Lore Company, the Harry Spider. 
This one's actually not hairy because I didn't, I thought I grabbed it and I didn't. I grabbed a bunch of regular spiders, but it's the hairy spider. There's two versions. There's one that's standard like this, which is cool. Then there's the hairy spider. The hairy spider has these little fine micro hairs in them to make it slower on the fall. And if cast correctly, it will stay on top of the water. You can slowly reel it across the top and give it that like bug running on top of the water effect. Very cool. By the way, I have a discount code with this company, IMBTB. We'll get you a discount. I'm gonna put that in the description as well. And before we get to number nine, you guys, if you like what I'm doing, hit the subscribe button or leave a comment. Maybe tell me the 10 lures that you like. Um, maybe tell me something I should do different. But interact. That's all I say, interact. So we're gonna get to number nine. Number nine surprisingly made it. And I got it late. I forgot exactly when I got this, Lord. I haven't even did any real videos on it. If you follow me on Instagram or Facebook or anywhere of those natures, I posted about it. I've caught fish with it. It's, I didn't use it actually all year. I don't, I know for sure it, it, it got used a lot when I got it. And the pros and cons, I feel like I should talk about it versus just popping it up on the screen. I'm gonna talk about the cons. I'm gonna leave the pros on the screen and the cons, but this lure, soft plastic, comes off pretty easily. Now, I did buy some things from Bass Pro Shop. If you remember Banjo Men on that had that little spring where you could twist the lure on the front, that's a better concept than what this has. I'm gonna tear it off, I'm gonna regret it because it's two little micro hooks that holds the bait that's not attached to the actual hook. I'm gonna pull it off. Oh, man, I hate doing this. Messing these up. Well, there it is. You can't, if you guys could see that, it is literally two tiny micro hooks that you push the lure on and it kind of holds it in place. And you see how easy that went in there? It's because I tore it already. I'm gonna switch it to the springs. They come off easily. And it's also, if you notice, this one I have all split tails. It comes with two different types of minnows, paddle tail and then split tail. Because of the material that they use, bluegills will come up and rip those paddle tails right off. No questions asked. I actually, in one of the videos, after the fish ripped the tail off, I took my fingernail and literally turned it into a split tail. And that's how I ended up catching all the pickerel that I caught and then a few bass, which I was shot. But it, it worked like phenomenally right away. No questions asked. Number eight. Of course, it's a fly. I have to stick a fly in there. And number eight, the reason why it's number eight and why it's in the top 10, I have a thing that I'm working on that requires a lot of editing. But this was one of the test subjects for microcasting crankbaits. And it is a Hattie Crawl by Russ. It's a custom Hattie Crawl by Russ. I, I'm i on a fly page. I, I do a little fly fishing, not a lot. I do have a fly rod, but I never post it. I'm so caught up on this big finesse and trying to get these reels to cast at an unrealistic, <laughs> as some would say, range of lures. And this one is one of the unrealistic range of lures. It's kind of hard to cast, but if a reel can cast this, it can cast anything because it has the fur for claws, which catches in the wind, it slows it down. This kind of requires like a lot of like precision, a little bit of finesse, a little whippy action. Just, it's a hard lure to throw because of how tiny it is and all of the things that catches in the wind. But I like it. It catches everything in the water, especially after a good rain. I hit the creek with that and it's a wrap. Catch everything in the creek. So, to number seven, 
I have Great Hunting, flat side, 45. F, it's a very important as to why I use floating versus sinking. And I think I may have explained it in some videos and I actually already have it on here. If you look closely, there is a piece of a suspend dot, just enough so that when I twitch it and snap it, it doesn't float right back up extremely fast. It's almost at a suspend slow rise. And then of course, if I wanted to adjust, I can always add more or make it even bigger. That's really small on there. It's probably a half a gram, just enough to get the head down so that it goes beyond what his range is originally. And that is number seven, Great Hunting Flat Side 40. Five. Number six is by Timco. Number six is by Timco. It is called the Reviry Meno 55 SP. I had to check my paperwork real quick. Timco Reviry 55 SP. Am I saying that right? Reverberry, Reverberry Minnow 50 SP. I'm probably ruining this name, but I like this lore. It kind of reminds me of the, there's another SP Minnow I use. I use so many SP Minnows, but I like this one and I like the other one. The other one I actually made it. I can't think of the name of it to save my life and it's on the tip of my tongue. I hate when that happens. It's a pointer, Lucky Craft. There it is. The lucky craft pointer. It's 50 SP or 55? It's 50 SP. I haven't used it. I didn't use it this year on purpose just to kind of fill out the new lures. This is number six, Temco. I almost ruined that. It's Temco, number six. Number five. You guys see me throw this a lot. It's, how can I put this? It's a cheat. It, Bass Pro Shops model. I use Bass Pro Shops model because it's cheap, very effective. Wacky rig, Nico rig. It is called Stick O Worm. This is a three inch model. I throw it everywhere, it catches everything and i've caught a trout recently i don't know if i'm gonna put that on video or not i don't think i am it's just one of those things you know what now that i mentioned it the video will pop up at the bottom right or left and they should for all the lords by now so that you can see it. i think i'm gonna post that little video just the trout or maybe a bat. maybe i'll mix it up we'll never know but here we are stick o worm by Bass Pro Shop, I think you get like 16 in a box for like under $5. You can lose them pretty easily. This is the color I like. I don't know the color name, but it's like a natural, for me, natural brown. I try to keep it close to what the water looks like. Or I will use, I think it's called a pumpkin, watermelon something. It's got red flakes in it. That's another one. But here it is. And I also have a little tiny push weight in the front to keep it down and make it stand. It's heavily salted. I've seen all that salt just come out of there. But yeah, this is like a tournament lord, man. If you're in a tournament and you wanna just get on the board and actually surprisingly catch a monster bass, this would be the one, this would be the one. And that's the reason why it's number five. It just doesn't catch a slew of fish like the next set, number four to one. Number four, it is called Shiner Pack, and it looks like a spearhead or a Yuki, but it's a knockoff. Looks pretty close to a Ryuki. I've caught 
on one day it was a mistake and the video posted already so i'll probably leave a link of that video i was using the abu garcia and i caught five different species in under 30 minutes i want to say the video was under 30 minutes under 30 minutes of me on the water because i had boat issues and all this other stuff and i just wanted to do a review on my aliexpress grab and I threw that first and I didn't change lures and it worked the entire time. And it's been working way before when I use it on the river, ponds, creeks. The only downfall is it doesn't swim correctly. The erratic action is what makes this thing work. And that's one of the cons and one of the pros. It's just weird that a mistake lure was made and it works phenomenally. Top three, I'm gonna say right now, it was pretty tough picking the top three and putting them in an order anyway. They could go in any order. Well, one and two can go in any order. Number three, you've seen it maybe. It doesn't get used often. I don't see too many people talking about it, but of course it is a tiny, 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 tiny jerk bait by Little Jack. It's called Forma Q. It's 1.5 grams. It's dead slow sinking. Like, I don't use a lot of sinking lures, but it's crazy that these two lures, number four and number three, are number four and number three, and they're both sinking. It's just that one there it falls really fast in comparison, comparison to this one. This thing catches everything, big and small. It has like the best fall rate that I've ever seen for a tiny jerk bait. It's aerodynamic. You can really throw this thing for it to only be 1.2 or 1.5 grams. It doesn't say on here, but I'm pretty sure I put it in my notes. You will see it on the screen. It looks like a bait fish. I probably could get away with making some kind of Frankenstein with the piece ton by Jackal and taking these off and putting like three of these on and, and trying that just to see how it does. But Little Jack, Forma Q, number three. If you don't have it in your box and you throw light gear, put it in your box, you're guaranteed to catch fish. I've been trying to study how they colored this and you can't tell if that's like pre-wrapped and then it looks like there is some foil down the middle and then they wrap around the foil and then they spray it underneath. I, I airbrush lore, so that's just one of the things is just looking and studying how these things are done, but this is done really well. I like how it came out. Everything about it is phenomenal. Definitely add this to your, your box if you don't have one. Number two. I look at both of these lures, and if you guys ever watched any of my videos, I'm going to say number two was technically my honorable mention from last year in 2022. And it is the Nico Bait Wax Worm. It's really one of those things, I've actually put all of the hooks in all of them. The hook that I actually use and the method that I use is a Cheb Rig, a 0.5 weight Cheb Head with a Ryuki size eight EUG hook. You could find those EUG hooks on Tackle Warehouse too. But it is the wax worm. And here's the kicker. There is no, the only, now that I think about it, the only con and the only reason why I put the, this at number two now, thinking about it, this lure is a little bit harder to use to catch what I catch. I cut everything. You name it, fresh water, everything bites this thing for some odd reason it is like 
undestructible, it stretches. This is another lure. If you don't have this in your box and you're throwing light gear, you need to put this in your box. I'm not gonna say you need to, you, you probably don't really honestly, but if you have it in your box and you wanna catch, I've caught spawning bass with this. I've caught trout, perch really like this lure, crappies really like this lure. Of course the bluegill. But if you're, you're if you're out there to target a particular fish, don't throw this. This thing's gonna you're gonna get agitated if you're just trying to catch one style of fish. This is not the lure you want to throw. This is the lure you want to throw when you're trying to fill your box and you want to have fun, or your bucket or whatever you want to call it. You want to have fun. That's the lure, and the only reason why it's number two versus number one. Number one has been out for over two years. And it's crazy that I finally seen it this year. I call it the Ratatata on purpose because I didn't really want it to sell out. And I know once I post it anywhere that people could find it, it's gonna sell out. I got enough now, I'm good. I spent a pretty penny to get as many as I got. I'm no, I know I'm never gonna have to order this again. But the real name of the appendage lord is called Ratatata. It's like, no, I'm joking. It is called Hide Up. Hide Up? Hide Up? Hide. H I D E Up. For Hideo, the original guy who made it. Koki Shrimp. Or Shrimp Koki, because there's another version. There's three different versions of this that has different names. It's really close. Koki looks like a ball with like just appendages coming off a really hard lure to find. I think I found a pack of two for like a hundred bucks. I'm like, I'm not about to spend a hundred dollars on two rubber lures that I may lose. User friendly. You literally stick a hook in this the same way you would. I think it's a size six, if I'm not mistaken. They come in three different sizes. This is the size I like to use the most is the middle size. You throw it out the same way you would a wheelless worm. And you just barely move it. There are many different methods, I'm pretty sure. The chub rig didn't work for me, but the floating, letting it just fall, free fall, it's almost like just throwing live bait. I've caught bluegill, I've caught huge bass. Pickerel. I think I caught a freaking catfish on this by mistake. And the video at the bottom, my daughter's using it. She's catching trout. <laughs> this, she's catching trout on the smaller version. I don't know what it looks like or what it's supposed to represent. This one to me reminds me of like a rat in the water because of the color, like a hairless rat and they just tear this thing up. My biggest crappy was called this crappy. Really like this lore a lot. Hard to find. There's like one place that I know of and they only get like five packs of each color randomly, but this is number one, people. If you made it this far and you feel like there should be something else, double check my older two videos to see if they had already made it. And if they didn't, leave a comment, say, hey, 2024, I need you to try this lore and I'll go out of my way and I will try it. But don't, don't recommend something to me that's only gonna target one species of fish. Call the multi-species angler for a reason. And that's the reason why this lure is number five versus top three, because this isn't really a multi-species lure per se. As for this thing is. I'm gonna catch you all in the next video. If you have any questions, of course, leave a comment. Definitely share, give me your insight. Until next time, peace out.